Happy Tuesday. Okay, so I'm in a parking lot of the gym and I hope that you guys, it's not my gym, by the way, I don't go to the gym like this, but I hope you guys can, I hope I have connection. I hope I'm not spinning. I hope I'm not like was last weekend in front of Target last Sunday where it was kind of glitchy. So I'm going to wait for a couple, couple of people to hop on. Again, it's not my usual time to go live. So let's see if anybody, hi Emeralda, how is my connection? Are we okay? Hi, Thomasetta. Hi, Brianna. Hi, guys. Oh, Jenna. It's moving so fast. 180. Okay, I just need to make sure I'm good. Okay, hey, Jess. So, love you. Priscilla here. Hi, Priscilla. You look amazing. Thank you. It's raining out. I'm wearing these sunglasses. I know it's a little bit crazy, but no makeup. You know how that goes. I wanted to show you. I picked this spot. I don't think I could. Oh, I can flip. Let's just show you how beautiful the ice storm looks out. Oh, you can't see anything, can you? Okay. You can't tell, but the trees look gorgeous out there across the way. It's nice when you're, now it's raining. Thank God it warmed up a little bit and we're not getting all of this as snow. But in the meantime, like when you get to where you're going or you don't have to leave the house and you don't have to worry about slipping or driving or freezing, it's actually very beautiful when the trees look like this. If it wasn't raining. So, Hey, Rachel. Hey, everybody hopping on. I wanted to talk about a comment that I got yesterday. Well, first of all, hello. Can we talk about a milestone? We hit 10K subscribers yesterday. I am so excited. Thank you so much, Jess, for pushing um, our channel on your channel. Thank you to everybody here. Each and every one of you played a part in us hitting that goal, which is amazing. I will do a whole separate video, whole separate celebration. <laughs> Thank Thank you yeah finally it was a slow grind but it's just proof that if you put your mind to something you need to not focus on the haters not focus on it had to happen yesterday you got to put your nose to the grindstone and you just have to push and work your butt off until you get there We'll talk about that on another video, but so thank you I just want to say thank you I love you all you guys are all amazing. But I got a comment on yesterday's video that I wanted to touch on today because it just, it tore at my heart and I've been there and every single one of you has been there at some point or another. If you yourself were in prison, if you're in a relationship with somebody who's in prison, or if you, let's say, were in the military or you lost a loved one, at some point in every single person's life, they're going to grieve. Maybe they will be, God forbid, divorcing or their kids are growing up and moving out of the house and your loved one isn't with you for the holidays. I want to touch on this so everybody can get something out of this, but this was written by a prison wife and she said, this is her first Christmas, which makes it so much more unbearable. I get it. It's the most difficult. I made sure I had tissues in my car because my allergies get crazy. She said, um, this is her first Christmas, so of course that's extra depressing. Your first year is usually very depressing, and especially the first set of holidays. So she said, I just can't celebrate because my loved one is rotting in a jail cell while I am out here. Oh, it broke my heart. And I just wanted to kind of touch on that and let you know how I got past the feeling of Adam rotting in a jail cell while... I was out here feeling guilty, celebrating, and this is what I wanted to pass along to you. Is that Ray Ray? Hi, Ray Ray, sweetheart. We get to choose our responses to anything in life, to anything in life, and it's hard, and I never want to diminish anybody's feelings because you have to be able to feel your feelings, and when you feel sad, you have to be able to acknowledge that. When you're depressed, you have to be able to acknowledge that, and that's okay. That's totally fine. You need to feel it. You need to experience it. I used to have a woman who was, she was a Reiki, Reiki? I hope I'm saying that right, a Reiki teacher. And she once in a conversation told me that feeling pain is part of the human experience. And at its most basic level, feeling pain means you're alive. Feeling pain means you're alive. It sucks, but feeling pain means you're alive. And it also allows you to feel 
to understand what it feels like and how great it is to feel joy and success and accomplishments. So feel your pain. That's okay. You just can't unpack there. I like to do the perspective flip like this. First of all, how about we get some thumbs ups? I would love thumbs ups. That was not proper English, ignore me, but I would really appreciate likes on this video. Just do a perspective flip. Your loved one who's incarcerated already harbors so much guilt for leaving you out here, period. For having you have to do this by yourself, period, across the board. It sucks for them, I hope. If they're guilting you into not celebrating, that's something else that you need to explore because I believe that that's more of like a controlling relationship because at its very minimum, even if you were a co-defendant, even if you knew what they were doing and they still went inside and either protected you or you got out of the case or whatever it is, you are still living free. You're the one that's free, so, in order to ease their shame and guilt and depression, kind of like what Lasanne said in yesterday's video about cel celebrating the holidays. For her, oh my gosh, thank you so much, Jenna, for the $5, I appreciate you. So in order to avoid that depression, you have to try to make the best out of it. Like Lasanne was saying yesterday, even if you don't want to do things, if you don't want to go, if you're just like that work party, that was the example to use, or that dinner party, or that family event, ugh, I don't want to go. I just feel miserable. I don't want to celebrate. I'm depressed. If you say, this one's for you, babe, doing this for us, I'm going to make you proud of me, and you tell yourself, I will go for 20 minutes and leave if I have to. The fact that you get up and you go is a huge step in the right direction. Usually when you get there, you're having fun and you wanna stay. If not, you can leave. If people are pressuring you to say, make an excuse to stay, that came out wrong, make an excuse and you can leave. But you can't just live in misery thinking that he's rotting in a jail cell. Your words and your thoughts have so much meaning, so much meaning. And Believe me, I am not diminishing what you feel. I have felt that way myself as well. But if you think about those words, right? I'm very dramatic with my words. And then I have to take steps back and be like, is that what you really meant? So, and this is just, these are the exercises I've used throughout the years where people ask me, oh my God, how do you do it? If I were you, I were working in the corner. I wouldn't be able to function every day. I'd be crying every day. I wouldn't be able to get out of bed. That's why I share this stuff with you. Not to take your feelings away from you. Not to tell you that you're wrong. Because no matter what, your feelings are they're right because they're your feelings and they're telling you something about yourself for you to either move forward with for you to say mm, these feelings feel this way so I need to reevaluate and maybe this isn't the relationship for me or maybe I need to do it differently this way so I just want to make that crystal clear that I'm not trying to diminish your feelings I am not saying well it's easy for me it needs to be easy for you because it is not it is certainly not easy for me but this is what I do these are the perspective perspective flips that I use. When I think about somebody rotting in a jail cell, I think about like leprosy. I think about their skin like rotting. Is that really what he's doing in there? And I know you're, I know what you're saying. I'm not taking it away from you. What I'm saying is it kind of helps put it in perspective for you. He's not living on the street. He does not have a skin eating disease. Let's hope. He is someplace that is not comfortable and that's and I'm sorry and I hate it for you as much as I hate it for me and for everybody else watching this but he's not rotting he's okay he will be okay he wants you out here to be doing the best that you can to be celebrating to be not making him feel extra guilty be, or shameful of him being in there. So I challenge you to flip that perspective. He, it sucks he's in there. But instead of saying he's rotting in a jail cell, you could say it sucks that he's away from home and he's cold, and he's lonely. How can I make it special for all of us? How can I make it special for him and for me and for the kids? Can he call home and Listen to the kids open one gift that is from daddy or from mommy or from uncle, whoever. 
can he call home if you're religious and maybe lead the grace for dinner, before dinner that night? Can you record the kids opening the gifts and then if he can't call at a certain time and play the audio for him over the phone? Can you do Christmas maybe when it, you have a visit? And let's say that you can't go to visit this time of year, like I can't. Can you do Christmas in July when you go to your next visit in July? make it a special day yeah it might be silly and yeah you might feel like people are looking at you but who gives a flying rat's butt if people are looking at you they're watching you anyway anyway he's in prison so i challenge you guys if you haven't watched yesterday's video oh they did christmas in july for you that's awesome when you came home if you didn't watch yesterday's video, go back and watch it. It was a little vlog in the beginning that was, I just sped it up a little bit. Us, Lisanne got some footage from a fall festival she went to that was beautiful. So we put that in there and then we did a little bit of decorating. And then Lisanne and Jojo just so happened to be together. Jojo's from Arizona, Lisanne's from South Carolina and Jojo flew into South Carolina to visit a different friend and they wound up being 10 minutes apart. So they got together a couple of times, they hung out sisterhood bonding amazing total fomo you guys Wah. but they filmed this video together and it was so beautiful because they're talking about how they're celebrating christmas and the holidays without their loved ones first of all jojo's boyfriend is a lifer who will never come home and i talk about jojo very often so now you guys get to meet her where i say in all of the years that I've been supporting prison wives and family members in all of the years that I've been doing this myself, I have never met anybody except for Jojo. In the hundreds of thousands of men and women that I've met doing this, again, including myself, nobody but Jojo that is 100% firm in the belief knowing that her boyfriend will never come home and she's constructed her life around that. And she still reevaluates her situation every day asking if she could stay or if it's time for her to go because he pled to life so there is no there's no appeals there's it's set in stone that was his plea life that's it without parole so from her perspective it's how she celebrates the holidays and then from lasanne's perspective where her loved one was inside he should i'm sorry mom if you're on here i hope i'm not triggering you he should have been home and instead he lost his life inside of a state facility because his medication and his disease, which was totally manageable, was mismanaged while he was inside. So this is her first year, it's her sixth year, I think, without her husband, but it's her first year without him because he's passed on. So she's talking about how she's getting through the depression and she's celebrating and things that she's okay with not doing things that are triggering her because nobody could tell you how to celebrate the holidays when you're grieving and you might say yes to something and then last minute like mm, mm -mm, i can't do it and that's fine but I, what i don't want you to do is to put the intention out there that you're going to be miserable i had somebody a beautiful young girl comment on the video the other day that her older sister is now in a relationship and they're spending her sister and her boyfriend celebrating the holidays with her boyfriend's family and it's the first year the whole entire family isn't going to be together and christmas is going to be miserable and my response back is and i hope this doesn't sound harsh this is coming from a place of love but Christmas will be miserable if you've already intended for Christmas to be miserable. If you look at that as, my sister is so happy. She's now experiencing love. This is a new chapter of life. We're growing up. Family is going to change and morph. And although she might not be with us this year, in a few years, she might be bringing nieces and nephews and grandkids home because that's just the ebbs and the flows of life. And you're not going to be able to control that kind of stuff. But what you can do is control your mindset and set the attention now that Christmas will be beautiful. So instead of looking at her full stocking because she's not there and see lack and loss, look at her full stocking as stocking full of love and that is a beautiful analogy of how much love is full and overflowing in her life and in turn her family your family's life so what you could do is figure out how you're going to include her you could figure out how you include her with things that we don't have like facetime maybe she could take the phone around and introduce your parents to his parents 
Maybe with your loved one in jail, they can call, and if this is okay with them, Adam hates this. So you make sure it's okay with them. It depends on their introvert, extrovert personality and how they are with phone and minutes and all that stuff. But some people like to be passed around or put on speaker. Some people don't. You don't do that for Adam. He's not a fan, and that's okay. You have to ask them first. But however you can incorporate them and however you can flip your perspective and make it a positive one is how you're going to get through this. It's how I've gotten through the high highs and the very low crushing lows over the course of the past decade that I've been back in Adam's life to get through this. I've been through some of the most difficult experiences of my life clemency when we thought he was coming home bags were packed getting ready to move almost quit my job and it was pulled out from under us last minute my mom passing it's the first year without my mom we're choosing to honor christmas in the ways that we can to honor her and to bring her traditions into christmas the way we can there are some things that we just can't do example last week on her birthday i did a live video well after i did it during the afternoon like this one because i had stuff going on we all went over to my my mom's house for dinner well, my dad's house for dinner and my sister suggested doing a cake and i said guys it's not cool to do a cake for me this year we can't live as if she's here we have to honor her memory but i have to draw the line with blowing out candles for somebody who's gone like we have to start accepting that she her spirit is here she's here celebrating with us in a different way but that that was my bottom line that was my boundary so you have to figure out what's going to trigger you worse and then work your way around that and just positive affirmation the heck out of it i have a video that i created with positive affirmations for prison life specifically well i made it for prison life but it's really for anybody that i posted around last early december that i'll repost in the community tab but also i could do another one for all of us as well new home new normal new traditions i love that yeah so embrace figure out your new normal and set those new traditions and leave the ones for now that you just can't do without him like lisanne couldn't do her normal usual christmas tree this year she said in that video and she talked about the first christmas tree that they did when her husband was first arrested and it was really cute i'll let you guys go watch that video and see how she she had to she felt she had to have a christmas tree because her son would have been depressed without it but they didn't get a tree they did it in a different way which was adorable and she has now that memory she laughs on it because she destroyed <laughs> the apartment she was living in a little bit but this year it's different this year he's gone he's gone he's not with us anymore so she went out in the backyard and she chopped down a charlie brown christmas tree and during this video she was saying that's all I could do at that point. That was enough for my emotion. That's all I could handle at that point. Am I going to decorate it? That's up in the air. I'll see how it feels when it comes. So that's it. Just see how it feels when it comes. But don't shut yourself off just by saying he's rotting in a jail cell. Think about what that actually would look like. He's genuinely not rotting in a jail cell. Yeah, he's probably going to be sad. She's probably going to be sad. It's going to be different. You'll be sad. But nobody's in a jail cell with their skin rotting off. Just just try to put yourself in perspective so you're not overly melodramatic about things. Because otherwise, you are setting yourself up to have a miserable day. You said it. You said it. I am so looking forward to Christmas because I know Adam will always call to wake me up on Christmas. That's our thing because... It was an agreement that we had to come to. It was a compromise. He never liked calling me during the holidays. I got all of my feelings. Like, why don't you want to talk to me on the holidays? I want to talk to you. And it wasn't that he didn't want to talk to me. It was that he didn't want to take me away from my family on the holidays because he already felt guilt around me being sad because he's not with me. So that's a lesson in communication because I was all up in my feelings about how he doesn't want to talk to me on the holidays. He doesn't love me. Maybe he's using me, blah, blah, blah woe is me victim then when i approached him about it he said that's not the case i said well i still need to talk to you on the holidays it's my holiday i love you i want to talk to people i love so we need to figure this out so our compromise was him calling me first thing in the morning to wake me up now it's what i look forward to going to bed christmas evening it's like i mean christmas eve that night going to bed it's like a little kid waiting for santa claus i wait for mr claus 
in to call me on Christmas. So what traditions can you set? What things can you look forward to? What are you gonna put out there? I would love for each and every one of you, jail or not, to put an intention in the comments, to put an intention right now of how this holiday will be for you. It's going to be fun. It's going to be beautiful. It's going to be new. I am going to explore it as it comes. I open the opportunity. I welcome the opportunity to smile at the little things. I will find the silver lining. I'm just throwing things out there. What are your intentions? I want to see five before I go. Oh my God, I made my car so hot. Not sure, never been in that situation. That Oh, I love your friend, Al Guru. So it doesn't matter if you don't have anybody or not. If you have a holiday coming up, I would love for you to set an intention. So let's say my family, minus prison, minus mom being gone, holidays were always so stressful getting ready because everyone wanted everything to be perfect that everybody took away the fact that it's supposed to be joyous and fun. There was so much stress. We were all yelling at each other, trying to get everything done. And then finally the guests would come over and oh, everybody's buttoned up and perfect, but we're all pissed at each other, mad at each other, blah, blah, blah. So my intention would be it will be a stress-free Christmas because I'm putting that out there, not to sound woo-woo and crazy, it's psychology. I'm putting that out there and then I'm going to, my brain is going to grasp for anything that makes it peaceful and stress-free. That is how your brain operates. It's basic human psychology. Your brain operates on questions. Your brain operates on finding the answers to questions, I could say. So if you put the intention, it's going to be peaceful now, Oh, the whole time your brain's gonna try to find that answer. That is what your brain does. Seek reward, seek reward. Where's the peace? I found it, the peace. There's the reward. Where's the next piece of peace? I found it. Where's the stress-free? Where's the stress-free? But if you say it's gonna be miserable, he's rotting in a jail cell, your brain's gonna seek, seek, seek. Where's the misery? There's the misery. Where's the misery? There's more misery. Where's the rotting? There's the rotting. There's the misery. There's the whatever. That's what I'm saying, put it out there. Stress-free Christmas. I love it. The first holiday without your parents together. So what are you going to grasp for, Brianna, that will help you make it a good Christmas despite them not being together? It's our first since he came home, so that'll be a new normal. I am so happy and excited for you. I love you too, Emily. Ooh, good question. Is it worse when you're upset, when you're inside, and she's upset and crying about everything on the outside? I'm going to ask Adam that. Just saying, been locked up on Christmas. It sucks ass. I'm so sorry. We did that to Adam last year in Dallas. I asked him if it was okay. Remember, the worst one was Samantha's boyfriend. So... We all go to the Prisoner Family Conference every year. A whole bunch of us go as our SPWF meetup. It's in October. You are all invited and more than welcome to come. We're already starting to prepare for that. But anyway, despite regardless, when we were at dinner, every time somebody's loved one call, we'd put them on speaker and everyone would be like, hi. So everyone was like, hi, Adam. And he was like, oh, well, should I talk to everybody? Samantha's boyfriend called and we're all like, hi, Adam. And all of a sudden, all you hear is, what the F? but he said the full word. We die laughing. We're like, okay, we're going to leave you guys alone now to have your call. <laughs> it was so funny. Okay. Thank you for the great advice, Ro. You're welcome. My holiday is going to be kind of solitude, but I volunteer at the animal shelter, enjoy great movies, cook and chill, makes it great. It's about enjoying the little things. Yes. And who could be sad when you're around sweet little innocent fur babies? Does anybody else have a question or anything I can answer before I go? I have about like five minutes left on my lunch break that I actually only came out in this weather to make this video because tonight will probably get crazy. So I brought food to work. I ate at my desk and I was like, I'll be right back, guys. I ran to Dunkin' Donuts. I got a coffee and I came to hang out with you guys. Did I miss anything? Have fun, Ro. Don't work too hard. Stay warm. Thanks so much. Your shirt is cute. You love the fit. Thank you so much. You know what? I was thinking about telling you guys where I got this from, but here's the thing. The website, 
this was over way overpriced and it's one of those websites where you only get store credit if you send back the website Vichy dolls Vichy dolls Vicky dolls vici but i don't recommend it to be honest with you i bought a dress it didn't fit me properly but then you have to pay shipping both ways and you only get store credit so i wound up getting this shirt from it which like was like three or four different things that didn't fit right one came back and it was like very poor quality looking and i finally got this but not only was the shirt itself overpriced all the shipping back and forth it just wound up being ridiculous so if i can find a dupe of this for you guys i will let you know where it's from but i wouldn't recommend the site i used i'm telling my parents tonight about my boyfriend that we are back together my holiday is going to be peaceful without this conversation looming over my head i love that becca you put that out there that's amazing and if you need help, I have a video that I don't know if you've watched, but it's called What My Family Really Thinks About Me Being With A Lifer. And there are probably some tips that you can benefit from if you watch that from for this conversation. This is my first Christmas, but we're MWI, so I guess it's kind of different, but it's still hard. I'm RWI, so I knew Adam before, but we were united while he was inside. And I, I don't want you to diminish your own feelings because it's hard. And there's a grieving process, of course, when you lose a loved one to the system, right? If you met them before. But there's also a grieving process if you meet them while they're inside, although different, or if you rekindle while they're inside. Again, although different, I feel the MBIs, they have to... They have traditions with them out here already. They have to look at their stuff in the house. So it's different. It is different and it's difficult, but you're also as an MWI, while he was already incarcerated, grieving the life that you want with somebody new, grieving what you foresee your life to be. So it is hard and it will be hard. So that's why we're setting the intentions now that how is it gonna not be hard? Like how am I going to make this joyful and fun and not get lost in the fact that he isn't here i've taken a lot of tips from that video awesome 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 okay you guys i love you keep putting your intentions out there if you missed this live or if you are here right now i love you guys thank you for all the thumbs up if you're still here i love thumbs up thank you guys so much for helping me hit 10k um if you're not subscribed and you're new here please make sure you hit that subscribe subscribe button and ding that little bell so you don't miss lives or videos i know the notifications are kind of funky but if you think of intentions that you want to put out there or if you weren't able to think of one and it pops into your head later put it in the comments below this video because putting it out there is the first step for your brain to see that it's out there and then start to seek those rewards of finding whatever that intention is and then we could all we're a family we could hold each other accountable and check in with each other hey how's it going did you find that piece how can i help you stay stress-free what couple of words of encouragement do you need from me so that's it my intention is that this is adam's last christmas inside of prison just saying um and so i am going to find all of the joy and i'm going to really absorb everything that i've been able to do and all of the peace and joy that i've been able to grasp for and all the silver linings that i've been able to find and i'm going to hold on to that because next year when i'm celebrating with him putting it out there then these are the th i'm going to see how far i've come how far we've come and i'm going to take you guys all with me for that ride i wanted to ask how do you think your life will change when he's out and you're living as a married couple will there be repercussions hassle from the government etc that's a really good question so we're in a really 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 good position where we actually we actually had po's like fighting over him but we're he has a job lined up he has po that wants to take him he has uh state we're, we're moving to a state where the organization works very closely with law enforcement so we're coming out a, a step ahead of the game doesn't mean that it's not good there there are definitely going to be adjustments and growing pains and we're just going to take each one as they come i don't think you could predict the government putting you into positions that you didn't expect I think you have to expect the unexpected with this learn to roll with the punches keep yourself in good graces do everything the right way and just learn to live with it I mean if you guys don't follow Jess follow Jessica Kent's channel because she talks a lot about that and a lot about 
everything that she had to go through to get her daughter back that she lost while she, when she gave birth inside of prison. And she had to fight her ass off to get that baby back. And she had to go through, the system is set up to try to make us fail. So it's just about being tenacious and as driven as you are right now to keep everybody head of water, to keep your relationship going and surviving and thriving, myself included, that is the amount of dedication and determination that we have to put to keeping them out once they get out. It's not going to be 100% easy, but it doesn't have to be so hard either. And my mother used to tell me this all the time. And I laugh looking back at it now because she was right. But you put your energy where you want it to go, right? So I was so into competing in fitness that I neglected a lot of areas in my life. And my mom's like, if you put all of that energy into your job or going back to school, you would be so successful. And I was very successful at competing in fitness. It didn't really get me anywhere besides for bragging rights. I mean, it was awesome. I'm not saying I regret it, but what I'm saying is you put your energy where you want your energy to go and you fight your ass off to stay there. So I think that that kind of tenacity and determination is what you need and I need and we all need to do when they come home, keep them out because you're coming out with a handicap. They're handicapped because of the institutionalization. And if you guys didn't see my video about when I saw and Adam realized how bad it truly is for him, that was posted, I think last week or the week before, I think like a little thumbnail said, we didn't realize it was this bad. And it talks about institutionalization and PTSD. So they have that, the system is fighting against you. Now you have growing pains as a couple because you could be a really amazing prison couple knowing how to live apart. But then all of a sudden you're like, I don't know how to do this crap. I don't know how to live with somebody else. I don't know how to share my bed or my belongings or how to not do everything by myself anymore. And there's and there's his quirks that you have to get used to now and your own quirks that you don't even you didn't even realize you developed while we're gone. I have anxiety about that sometimes, but I just put out there that it's going to be fine because my God, if we could get through this, we're gonna be able to get through that. So that's a really long-winded answer that I don't know if I can necessarily really even answer until we're doing it and we're there and hey, don't you worry your pretty little faces. It will all be recorded on video because I think that that needs to be put out there for you guys to see how the adjustment works, what we do, how we're going through it, like Kat did for years with, with parole, with um, parole Thursdays and everything, keeping us all informed. I think it's it's hugely important. So I think that's it. Clearly the coffee is kicked in with this, hey Josh, with this uh, over talking. This is my first live. Yay, Janet. I'm sending all of you joy this holiday season. That's amazing. And joy right back to you. Okay, I think that's it. We will... Oh, don't commit crime. It's that simple. I really wish it was that simple, but it's not. If you look up the statistics on how many innocent people are in jail, your mind will be blown. And it's very easy to come and make these grand declarations about not committing crime, but that's so close-minded. With one in every 34, I just found out, one in every 34 Americans is incarcerated. One in every 34 Americans is incarcerated. It's not as simple as just don't commit the crime. That's so wrong. That's so ignorant sad. You're sad. You guys keep staying strong. Keep loving strong. Keep supporting one another through this journey because you're one day closer to it all being behind you. And Lord knows I am too. Lots of love from my heart to all of yours. I'll see you guys in the next one. We'll be back on Thursday. If you guys have suggestions or requests for videos that you want me to make for Thursday for lives, but go to court and be, we're not even going to engage the troll, you guys. I love you. Let me know. I think we're going to do between Christmas and New Year's, we'll do one completely fitness related video where I'll get you ready for not fitness, but health and wellness and weight loss and whatever you guys have for your resolutions for next year. As far as physically, I could do a whole live dedicated to that. And I think that would be good for you guys, for all of us. Okay. Love you guys.